I'm curious if you're frustrated or what is your emotions with now you, the team has traded two starters or, or loan or traded or loaned two starters? Well, uh, I, I, I don't know how to answer that because it's not frustration what comes to my mind. This, this MLS is, is uh, moving parts happen all over the place, all over the clubs, and I've been used to this a long time ago. Um, and again, you're talking specifically about Andrew, about Ibarra. Uh, I'm very thankful for the time that they have here. I always appreciate working with them, two good players for me, two guys that were always putting their hearts on the field, uh, very good off the field, both of them. Uh, and I just appreciate the time. The time now in Atlanta is over. We have to move on as a team. I have to move on as a coach. And the same happened, you know, with Joseph, with Luis, with all the players that have the party of Marcelino, of Arco. Like, uh, we have to move on and continue. And we, we, you know, those, all those names that I just put out there, George Campbell and more facing team. I mean, uh, there are good players. And, and that's life, that's football that, that happens. And all I can do is just to move on and, and focus on the players that I have, which also, I know you heard the news. We are signing players, and more players are coming. And then, after this period of time of you know players leaving, players staying, or players signing, then I think we can see what type of person we have. Well, what is your plan to fill in uh, for Gutman and for Ibarra? Who might take those positions? Yeah, I think in the midfield we have too many options. In the midfield we have. I think we have. Uh, if, if there's depth in one position, I think it's a midfield. So uh, there are a few options there. Uh, and, well, you have to make decisions. Of course, the, this came up quickly. So, you know, we have to adjust. Uh, but we have options. The same with Andrew. I think you've seen uh, Caleb playing left back. You've seen Aiden McQueen playing left back. Ronald Hernandez playing left back. So we have options. Depends on what we need. Um, and we will move on and we will adjust. How will you use uh, Luyambo when he, whenever he's eligible to play? How? Mm -hmm. uh, or that six or an eight or, uh, or? Yeah, there. I think more as a double pivot. I think that's how, how we are planning to use him. Uh, where is a six and eight? I think we are leaning more towards an eight, but uh, more as a double pivot rather than a guy that is going to be uh, uh, in between the lines or stuff like that. I don't think it's his profile, uh, but he's going to he's going to be a guy that's going to help us with. We need some duels that we need in the midfield, physical, can cover ground, and uh, he's very good at connecting passes for you. So it's, it's going to be more of a connector from a different line, and you know, uh, he has to integrate in the system. And we have to see how he shows next to some pairs and see what is the best pair there, which players adapt better to his positioning. So we have to see that uh, as a team. And I mean, Gutman has started a lot of games this year, so I assume he wasn't a player that you wanted to be traded or, or asked to be traded. Is that <laughs> accurate? Well, when it comes to that, again, uh, Carlos was just with you guys. And, and for me, Carlos, roster, players leaving, I cannot talk more about that. Uh, for me, my role as a coach is to try to give the tools that I have in my charge now, uh, the best tools to succeed. And, you know, more than that, I don't want to start a controversy here. If, if I like this, I don't like this. this, this we're in communication normally with Carlos. We're always talking about how to improve the team. And, you know, signings happen, uh, players leaving happen. And we are just. Well, it seems like a difficult spot that you're in now without Navarro because he become very central to your, the team that you put out. I think he's played the six most minutes on the team this year, seem to be improving. Um, so is that something that the team is going to have to work around during this month? before yeah. they can really gel? Yes, as I said, we have to adjust. Uh, of course, Ibarra was doing great, but uh, I think you all saw the progression of Ibarra when he arrived here. Um, and this moment, he's been much better. And he was uh, part normally of the starting lineup. Yes, that's true. Uh, but again, this happens in the league. I mean, you've seen, I want to talk about other things, but other players leaving and guys that were starting for other clubs are leaving and are going because they, when you play, you. Players are interested, uh, teams are interested in you, so it's normal. It's MLS, I've seen this many times, and probably you have seen it more than me. So, um, of course, we will adjust, we will try to adjust in there and try to uh, improve that area as well. When you have a month like this during the middle of the season where there is so much player movement, do you change your approach on the training pitch almost to be more like a training camp where you're trying to get players 
integrated in, in specific ways, or do you kind of just carry on? I'm just wondering how these new players that come into the team impact the work overall in training. Well, with the new players, it's always the same process. Try to slowly build them up to, to understand the system, understand our methodology, our processes, you know, the activation before the session, the gym after, uh, how we train, intense training sessions, shorter but very intense, uh, tactically, what's their roles in each situation they are, offensively, defensively, transitions, uh, fair from the back, final third, what are their roles, and uh, slowly, very slowly, we have to integrate them. With the rest of the team, we normally train them all the same. We train them in the same roles. So when we do today, we did unit work and we were training patterns in the final third. We train the guys playing outside the same. We train the strikers the same, so they know. So whenever we need them on the field, they know what they have to do. So that's the hope. And always with the new players, we try to build their confidence and their understanding on the on the tactics that we are trying to play. I should have done more research about this, but Garth has said that he likes to deal in this window just because. Globally, it just makes more sense financially, economically, um, and obviously you've worked with you know on a team with Garth before. So, do you have experience kind of with this in terms of integrating a lot of new important players during this time? Yes, I mean Brian was a great mentor for me to understand the emotions, the different things happen in the head of the player when they are moving, especially coming from Europe to different countries, different actually continents, and coming here to impact the game. Uh, family, status, new life, new culture, adapting to new language, adapting to all of this is very important. So that's why at times the last part of our job is talk about tactics with them. It's about knowing them, where is their head, what is their motivation, how we can focus to uh, push themselves, to challenge themselves in every training session, integrating the culture and the team, all that. Uh, that's where we spend most of the time. And then at the end, oh, by the way, you have to do this on the field, right? So, uh, that comes also with training, so uh, I can say that my time in Seattle, those signings in the middle of the year were very successful, and part of that is, is because, number one, we signed good players, and number two, because uh, Brian was doing a great job at integrating them in the system. Is there something you want, uh, a consistent uh, skill that you're looking for from some of these new players, like, that you maybe don't have now, like speed, for example, Miyamba looks like he's a pretty fast guy. Is that something you're trying to get with all of these players that are coming in? I cannot highlight one over the other. I think you want good footballers, right? That can, you know, play, uh, you know, speed on, on its own. It's nothing if you don't have the ability to understand time and space. So you've seen one of the best midfielders ever is, for me, Sergio Busquets. He's not the fastest guy in the world. And, you know, he understands football better than many, many, many fast players. So, Speed is one thing, mental speed is another one. Uh, with that saying, of course, we know Mujumba has uh, physical attributes that are going to help us, but I think the most important part is that he understands how to use his physical attributes. So, uh, you want good footballers around, and yes, certain characteristics you're looking because of the type of players we have around, but I would say we want overall good people, good players. The formation change that y'all used uh, against Philadelphia? Got the shutout, uh, the offense created, uh, I can't remember how many chances, but a good amount of chances. It, might this be the base formation going forward? We will see. We will see. Um, uh, I'm not married with one or two formations. I'm very flexible tactically. I think you have seen that. But uh, but I, at some point, I need to stick to one. So I'm just now in this moment when we don't have Myers, when we don't have, when we didn't have uh, Derek, and now that we are losing some players, some others are adapting. After all these moving parts that, yes, will happen in the next few weeks, uh, we have to, okay, we shuffle everything, okay, what's the best lineup, what's the best 11, and then from there we make a decision. At the moment, uh, I think back five look good. We may continue with that one for the near future. And then after these two games, these three games, we will see what, what we can do. Gonzalo, how are you?